this miracle. For us, let us, that's not a good story. You know, the man was eventually healed, but that's not our story. Don't let it be 38 years before we receive our miracle. You understand? So we are gathered here all the time, every fourth Sunday, the last Sunday of every month. We gather here because we know that God has told us it's going to be a victorious Sunday. So we are coming with victory in mind. Amen? And so today we are having a guest minister. He's a man I've known for many years. And um, he's Reverend Afolabi Samuel Koka. He's the senior pastor of Redemption Inheritance Ministry, also known as the King's Chamber. He understand he was called into a prophetic ministry. And when he starts to minister, you will have an idea. Uh, someone who has been here several times, you will see that influence upon him. And I'm, I'm believing in the Lord that uh, it will be a great blessing to us. Amen? You know, normally we have our Victoria Sunday, the last Sunday. But we moved it to this fourth Sunday because we wanted him to be a great blessing to us. And so let's be expectant. And, and, and just know that, you know what? I came here with a burden I am not going to live here with. Amen? I'm here with a burden that I am not taking back home because we have come to the one who will answer our prayer. Amen? Praise the Lord. Please, let's welcome Pastor Koka. Amen. I follow the Koka. Amen. Hallelujah. If it's unto Jesus, let's give it to him more and more. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I want to say a big God bless you and thank you to Pastor Gandhi and Pastor Obon and Pastor Ogu Daddy. Am I right? Ogu Badi and all forms of leadership and your reception have been fantastic one of the best my first visit to us started in 2001 but i can say jesus house yours is one of the best so i bring you greetings from my wife my children and my latest granddaughter so the lord bless you let's lift our hands for prayer Precious Father, we thank you for your grace and the manifest presence of your glory in Jesus' house. Thank you for the life of your messengers and the hand of yours that is at work. Thank you for the great and mighty waves of your glory that is in display. And so, Father, as we go into your word and into this prayer for Victorious Sunday, Father, I pray, O oh God, that your grace with your ministering spirit will work wonders in our midst. Let there be wonders without number. Let the hand of the Lord be visible. Let there be salvation, healing, and deliverances. Let the heavens over this meeting be open. Let your name be glorified. At the end of it all, Lord, I vow to give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, because you will do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to your power that is at work. We give you praise, Master, in Jesus most exalted name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Can the living say a living amen? amen? You may be seated in his presence. This morning, this victorious Sunday service, I'll be ministering to us on the subject of you've got the victory. You've got what? Even our father said to our father Abraham, God said to our father Abraham, and call those things that be not as do they are. But this morning, quickly, let's turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter number 5, as I read through verses 4 to 5 and verses, verse 18. To save time, if the God's word translation can be projected just to buy time. It says in verse 4 of 1 John 5, because everyone who has been born from God has won the victory over the world. Our faith is what wins the victory over the world. Now verse 5, who wins the victory over the world? Isn't the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Then let's jump to verse 18. We know that those who have been born from God don't go, sin, go on sinning. 
Rather, the Son of God protect them, and the evil one can harm them. Praise the Lord. Now, that is to say, by virtue of being born again, we have won the victory. And because we have won the victory, our faith is not just what gives up. Our faith enforces the victory. Bear this in mind. In the course of praying and enforcing our faith, you don't come from the perspective of a defeated person. You don't come from a perspective of somebody who is come to beg God or that whether it happens or it doesn't happen. The Bible tells us about faith, the faith, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, the faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. And we are told in verse 6 of Hebrews 11 that when we come before God, that we should also, those that seek him must know that is God, that is he's able. There is no basis coming to God when you don't expect a result. For where there is no expectation, there can be manifestation. So the manifestation is, I was blind, now I can see. I was barren, now I am fruitful. I am sad, now I am joyful. I lack, and I operate in abundance. If you are alive in the house, can I hear a living amen? amen? So in the light of this, enforcing it is this. The fact that you are born again, you are born of God. The principle is you have guaranteed that you are an overcomer of the world. That is why when Jesus was speaking in John chapter 16, 16 verse 33, we are told that the peace he has given, that the world cannot receive of such a peace. So in the light of this, when you come before God in prayer or about your progress in faith, no matter what is happening around you, have this understanding that over 2,000 years ago, that Jesus was wounded for your transgressions bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace wanted upon him by stripes that we, by his stripes were made whole. Isaiah 53 verse 5. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 17, the Bible tells us about he himself taking away our infirmities. So what God has taken away, and one thing about faith is that you must understand that the word of God and God, they are one. So if you take God's word and God with two immutable words, it's impossible for God to lie. Hebrews 6 18. So if God cannot lie, and what makes God God is his integrity, then when he says it, that's why we have to also study to show ourselves approved. Reading, uh, reading the Bible and meditating on it every day engrafts the word in our heart. When the word of God is engrafted in your heart and you confess it, you do away with angry words, you do away with negative words, you do away with gossips, backbiting, it helps fortify and amplify the confidence of which he has done. So in enforcing this is because over 2,000 years ago, he gave us the victory. In John chapter 19 verse 30, we are told, he said it is finished. That is completely complete. So what is complete is also completed in you. Your fruitfulness is complete. Your victory is complete. Your breakthrough is complete. Your life is complete. Your change of status is complete. Your marriage is complete. Your freedom is complete. Your paper is complete. Your settlement is complete. Your permanent residence is complete. Your citizenship is complete. Your long life is complete. The story of your life is complete. If that is your portion, let your amen roll like thunder. So in the light of this, these have to be enforced and that's why we apply prayer with confidence in God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, he says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we obtain mercy, that we obtain grace and find we obtain grace at a time such as this. Now, the time we are in are difficult times. God did not preserve us to shame us. God did not preserve us from being a victim of COVID. Those who died did not die because of their sin. Everyone is appointed for the man to die, wants to die and after which is judgment. Whatever God has preserved you for is to preserve you to a new level of glory. So in this next level of life, that's why we're in perilous times, difficult times, hard times, global recession, pains here and there, prices of things escalating, seeing as if the things shaking, sicknesses, diseases, all manners of issues. But nevertheless, we thank God that God is still alive in us. And because greater is it that is you than the one that is in the world, you will always be an overcomer. God did not call you a conqueror. He calls us to be more than a conqueror. So in the light of this, one of the principles of enforcing your victory because you are victorious. No matter what comes around, goes around, you, at the end, there is victory at last. And that victory at last, because God declares the end from the beginning. No matter how rough your road had been, God will turn things around. So Jesus too, 
when he came in the mortal mind, the mortal form of a man like you and I, he had this assurance and this confidence that certain principles that will be applied because everything about life entails a process. Breakthrough entails a process. Miracle entails a process. Salvation entails a process. So the process by which God turns things around and one of the major process is prayer. And the Bible tells, we are told that prayer is the master key. Every good thing needs prayer. Things that are not working need prayer. Things that are working need prayer. To sustain even the blessing of God in your life, you need prayer. So the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, Jesus speaking, Luke 18 verse 1, he says, Men ought always to pray and not to do what? To faint. That is not to give up. Don't call it quit. We had the testimony of the family of the Nuebus who told us about various attempts for so times despite the pain. I could just imagine some, some pain, especially for the woman, the process of even IVF, the retrieval process, whereby the pain is like to a dead woman. Seeing people who you have to stand with pray. I had a member who To be walking, we start walking for good. That amen is so. We come here not just to show our dresses, our outfit, but we come in line with Psalm 65, verse 2, that tells us, oh, Unto thee, oh God, unto thee, that answer a prayer, unto thee shall our flesh come. We have come and will not return in vain. We will not go empty handed. Can I hear a living amen? amen? I remember the apostle James, the brother of Jesus. Who said to us in James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, There is any among you sick? Is any among you afflicted? Let him do what? Let him pray. Let him call upon the elders and let the elders anoint with oil and the prayer of faith shall do what? Shall heal the sick. And he went further to tell us that Elias, that is Elijah, was a man of like passion as you and I. He said, He prayed that there won't be rain for 42 months and there was no rain. He prayed that it should be rain, there will be rain. I pray for you today. In this service, your dominion and empowerment will go to the next level. The grace of the Lord will be exhibited in your life like never before. Your confidence will come in a new way that the dominion right will be perfected. Can I hear a living amen? Thank you, Jesus. There is someone in the house here, you have been into depression in and out for quite a while. And by reason of this depression, you felt that life is not worth living. In fact, of recent, you felt like calling it quit with a suicide. And you looked around you and I said, well, it is better to go to meet Jesus quickly than even waiting for all this mess. Thus said the spirit of the living God. I will yet turn your life around. Only be that, be patient and rejoice. Wait on me with praises. Wait on me in dancing and rejoicing. For this yoke I will destroy, not by the medical drugs, but by my hand. And by my own valiant hand, I will preserve your life. Repent from the thought of suicide, for your life will be more glorious than the state you are now, see the spirit of the living God. We are going to lift our hands as a people. We are going to give thanks to God. You know, in all things, you give thanks. So let we enter his gate with thanksgiving. Psalm 100 and verse number 4. He says, we enter his gate with thanksgiving. We enter his court with praise. We will say, this is the day the Lord has made. Lift up your, your hands and say, Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you even for the gift of Jesus. I want to thank you for everything. The things you have done, the things you have been doing, the things you will do, and the things you will perfect in this service and in my life. Lord, I'm a candidate for your miracle. I want to thank you in advance for the candidate, being a candidate of your miracle, being a candidate of your victory. Father, I thank you. Lord, you say whatever I ask in the name, in your name, in the name of Jesus, you will do for me. And that whatever I ask in your name, Lord Jesus, according to John 14 verse 13 and 14 you will do. Father I thank you I give you praise. Lord I worship and adore you in Jesus name we have returned thanks. Now when we look at it you may be seated can we really live a victorious Christian life and help others to do the same? Today many Christians are self-centered everything is about me I'm not bothered about others but I pray 
It is more blessed to give, Acts chapter 20 verse 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So as we reach out to others, not only being saved, not only receiving messages, sitting in our comfort zone, but discipling nations. My prayer for us is that whatever unrelenting disappointment we have gone through, that have brought about heart, heart that made our heart to be sick. I pray in the name of Jesus that shall be a sudden good break. A sudden good break that can turn our life around. So we are going to pray. And before we pray, we are going to look at Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12. We will first of all look at it from the Passion Translation of the Bible. And then secondly, we will look at the same Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12 from the MSG, Message Emphasis. And then we're going to pray. And I want you to pray passionately because there's going to be a turn around in your life. I said there will be a turn around in your life. We people have endured in your life for long. But this moment, there's going to be a turning around. There's going to be a lifting for you. In that proverb, proverb, pray, project for me, proverb 13, verse 12. First, the passion translation, TPT. And secondly, the message emphasis. But to save time, Proverbs 13, 12, the message emphasis says, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. Leaves you what? Heart sick. The B part says, but a sudden good break can turn life around. A sudden good break can turn life around. You may be here with a, if I'm hopeless in your situation, but your hope is being inoculated by those testimonies. An 89 year old woman that they thought medically they thought is gone. At times, you know, doctors pronounce and project themselves as God with due respect. But the one who is the God, the great physician, the chief surgeon, the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one who rules in the affairs of men, the one who determines, who predetermines and pretesting, who says no to what doctor says is yes, and who says yes to what doctor says no, and because it's the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever, the shocker of pleasant surprises is coming to your life. It's coming to your home. It's coming to your family. It's coming to your business. It's coming to your career. It's coming to your ministry. It's coming to this church. If you believe, let your amen roll like thunder. So you are going to lift up your voices. And you are going to cry to God. You are going to say, my father, my father. Every unrelenting disappointment. Be it in my life. Be it in my family. Be it in my destiny. Be my God ordained assignment. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Disappear. Disappear. Command every unrelenting disappointment. Enough is enough. In your life, you've got the victory. Therefore, all unrelenting disappointment, every stubborn problem, every trouble thing in your life, challenges that refuse to go. I speak an oracle of God. I said be uprooted. Oppositions must go. Limitations must go. Enemies appearing must friends must cease in the name of Jesus. Every unrelenting disappointment be it in your family, be it in your father's house, be it in your mother's house, be it in your in-laws' house, be it in your community, be it in your locality. I command by the power of authority in the name of Jesus. They must give way. They must give way. They must give way. Right now, open your mouth and pray. Remember that a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open up your destiny. Rebrand your life. Rebrand your destiny. Rebrand your progress. This is the day of your victory. This is the day for you to break through. Open your mouth and break through. Remember that since the day of John the Baptist, up to this hour, the kingdom of God suffer, allows violence, the energetic, take it by force, take it by force. Men ought to to pray and not to faint. There go every unrelenting. Unrelenting disappointment, disappointment in relationship, disappointment in courtship, disappointment in marriage, disappointment in employment, disappointment in citizenship, disappointment in settlement, disappointment in finances, disappointment of mortgage, whatever disappointment, every unrelenting disappointment, every stubborn problem, every satanic issue, unrelenting high challenges, they must go, they must go. We are people under authority. We said to this God they go, we said to this come they come. 
come. They that know us shall serve us. Strangers shall hear our voice. They must come out of their hidden places. Whatever road of affliction, whatever pain, whatever sickness, whatever disease, whatever that have stayed long, that ought not to stay. By the power and authority in the name of Jesus, with the ministry spirit, angels and ministry spirit, for we are of salvation. I command you right now, lose your hold, lose your hold, lose your hold. The axe is led to the root of the tree. Whatever tree that is not planted by Heavenly Father, you can pray better. You can pray better. Prayer is business. Prayer is labor. It is your favorite job for them. Prayer of the righteous. They are very much. Let your prayer boil over. Let your prayer boil over. The devil must not keep you on the same spot. The devil must not keep taking advantage of you. You must be fervent. Enforce your victory. Enforce your victory. You've got the victory. Enforce it. Enforce it. Enforce it. Be more aggressive. Be more aggressive. Remember the Newton's law that every object is as a state of rest until relevant force is applied. Apply the relevant force. Apply the relevant force of fervent prayer. Of fervent prayer. Effectual prayer. Right now. Right now. Say Papa in Jesus name it is done we are still going to pray Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint we are going to pray the big part of that proverb 13 12 remember let me read the proverb 13 12 from the passion to oppression TPT to us he said when hope when hope's dream seems to drag on and on the delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. It becomes like a tree of life. Today, many of us will leave this place with the tree of life. Revival will be battered in our system. Our story will change to glory. If you are the fellow, let your amen be better than that of your neighbor. So we are going to place a demand. He said, but a sudden good break can turn life around. I know all around, lives will be turned around. Your health will be turned for the better. Your finances will progress for the better. Your business will receive fresh fire. God will visit you. Jesus will pass through and abide with you. That shall be divine encounter. That shall be divine visitation. If that is your portion, let your amen run like thunder. You are going to scream, my father, my father. Grant unto me a sudden good break that can turn my life around right now. In the name of Jesus, my father, my father, grant unto me a sudden good break that can turn my life around, that can turn my life around in my finances, in my health, in my works, in my paper, in my dreams, in my journey of life, in my destiny. Fire heart, fire heart. You can do better. You can do better. Pray them all. Pray them all. Yakagu sakataya, ekago satata, akapo sabranta, shale. Sata, a caco socotte, a capre de cate, Saka, Casata, a roca cate, a racocotte, a capre bevete, a cacacasaca, a caracata, a cacaroca cacacose, a cabasacatata, caracatata. In Jesus' name it is done. Permit me to add verse 13 before we move on. A message emphasis of Proverbs 13 13. It says, Ignore the world and suffer. Honor God's command and do what? How many of us want to grow rich? There are principles for financial prosperity. But wisdom cannot be battered even without us having revelation knowledge. And acting upon revelation knowledge makes faith to deliver results. So we are going to pray. We are going to say, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus. Help me to live consistently and patiently. A victorious life a victorious christian life and help others in the name of jesus my father my father help me to live consistently and patiently a victorious christian life 
and to help others. Lift up your voices. You produce after your kind. Light beget light. You must produce. You must disciple nations. Your life must be better. Your Christian race must be pleasurable. You must enjoy life. You must enjoy pressure. You must be an ambassador of Christ indeed. Shepo separata. Paresity. Consistent. Patience. Robo sapata. Akobo satata. Akabasata. To live a godly, victorious Christian life and to help others to be what God has ordained them to be. To mentor a right. To produce after God's heart. Shepo sata. Agabo sata. Haruka to say. Haraka kasata. Haraka satata. Eka posa pradata. Karo sete. Hebra satata. In Jesus name it is done. Amen. Sit down for two minutes to take a break. Now, no matter the prayer you pray, anything done outside love is a waste of time and resources. God became so unique and is still unique. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The two commandments that were given according to Matthew chapter 22 from verses 37 to 40, I paraphrase. He was asked the question, what are the greatest commandments? He said the first one is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with, your, with all your, everything and with all your soul. Totality of love, unconditional love. Not loving me because, not loving me because I can love you back. Like a woman will say, I can't submit to my husband because he didn't love me. It's not in your power to determine whether he loves you or not. The division of labor is submit. Husband love as Christ loved the church. My wife is too cancarious. Yes, you saw the cancarious gift before you bought into the market. So no matter what, receive grace to fill with the cancarious nation. There are prophets who marry prostitutes. There is nothing you are talking about that is not in the Bible. So yours is not the first and yours will not be last. Receive grace to cope and to be victorious. Can I hear a living amen? amen? So when God emphasizes love, when you are praying from the heart of love, when you are praying and doing things serving from the heart of love, you are victorious because God will never abandon you. God is attracted by love, not by hatred. Even where he said, Jacob have I love, Esau have I hated. It's a wrong translation because the literary Greek tells us that Jacob have I preferred more than Esau. Even the atheist, God loves everybody. I've not even seen where rain, where atheists are, rain will fall. Where believers are, rain will not fall. God is merciful. And the steadfast love of our God never sees great is his faithfulness. God's faithfulness will take you higher. Yeah. So love the Lord. And the second commandment is to love the Lord. Lord love our neighbor as ourselves. Today, in churches, when I mean churches, in the body of Christ, division, strife, contention, politics of rivalry. We talk about sibling rivalry, but we talk about church rivalry. Even within the same denomination, you have parishes rivalry, envying one another. Now, as a result, we see not our signs. The powers of old is not being made manifest because our motive and intentions are out of love, but out of what we can get. What is the need for me? Some come to church because they need job. Some is good. Some come to church because they just like the environment and the name. Where do you attend? Jesus' house. But it's good because good beget good. Therefore, but step up your love life. Let your love meter read high. You know, there are certain things. If love is out, prayer becomes like an empty symbol. But today, as we seek the face of God to retage and rebrand our heart, those things that have grieved us, you, you know that when you live in unforgiveness, you are not likely to live long. Do you know when you live in unforgiveness, you are telling God to step out of your space? How do you see this? Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. In Matthew 6, 14 and 15, Jesus speaking. He said that when we, that we should forgive those who trespass against us. You know, those, in order, those, those days we used to read, we don't close the service without reading the Lord's Prayer. And we end up that forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know, we end up praying such prayer causing ourselves. Because it, we find it difficult to forgive others. Now, forgiveness, no human being, mortal man, no matter how meek you are, no matter how humble you are, you don't have the ability to forgive any man. What is your point? The custodian of the spirit of forgiveness is the Holy Spirit himself. Except you have make a demand of the Holy Spirit to help you to forgive and give you the spirit of forgiveness to let go by grace. If not, you'll be saying this proverb. 
Well, I can forgive, but I can never forget. And anything that is a recurring memory and it hurts you or you get offended or irritated at, you have not forgiven. Forgiving is forgetting. Oh, pastor, should I not have been a fool and then they keep slapping me? Should my mother-in-law keep cursing and I keep pushing my head? Not about your mother-in-law, father-in-law, stepmother, or stepfather, or whatever. The point then is, when God gives you the grace, he activates love. He makes you to turn the left cheek. But wisdom permits that you are forgiven, which is unconditional. But common sense gives you the right to make sure you avoid such occurrences. So what do you do when you forgive? It's painful to forgive. But when I forgive, I go back to God. You have given me the grace to forgive, I've let go. And then I show love I like a fool. Humbling yourself, accept to be defrauded for the abundance of all good things. As a result, I go back to God. I have honored you, not the fellow who offended me. Or fellow I offended. I have honored you, compensate me. Say to me now, oh Lord. Say to me now, when? And then because it's the one who said I should forgive. He gave the directive, I honored him to obey. If Pastor Gandhi says, stand up, and I stand up. And Pastor Lumide says, get out. I will not mind Pastor Lumide because the superior authority has said, what? Stand up. Now I have honored the superior authority. If Pastor Lumide should harass me, I can turn to the superior authority and tell the superior authority, say to me now. I say, what do you want to do? I will say, carry me up here with one hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then as a result, my confidence is built that he will never forsake me or leave me. Is it not written about in Isaiah chapter 46, verse, chapter 46, verse 4, the A part? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, even up to your gray hair or old age. He says, I will still uphold you. Remember that God is not a man that should lie. Now that the son of man that should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoke in it, will not make it good. The goodness of God. So be conscious of walking in the goodness of God. God will not be annoyed with you and give you cancer. God will not be annoyed with you and give you diabetes. God will not be annoyed with you and cut your life short. Only good is God unto Israel. Psalm 73 verse 1. And only good is God unto them whose heart are perfect towards him. Perfection does not mean you don't have flaws. What makes you to be a man and not a God is the flaw. Naaman was a general but there is a bot in your life there is a bot in the life of your neighbor but as a Noah's Ark as a church you both together the giraffe is in the church the, the skunk, skunk, the skunk is in the church elephant is in the church tortoise in the church giraffe is in the church all man has to make a complete church Pastor Noah is there to make all of them a sheep the Lord who has granted Pastor Gandhi grace to walk with him thus far and to put all us together the one that will say I'm coming when he's, when he's going the one that is going that will say I'm still here the one that is trained well you are too tall and that one that says he's offended that you are too short and all manners of things that not makes church fun let us learn not only to tolerate one another but to love one another forgive one another before the offenses come so that our prayer will not go or will not go we will not be in that the grace is available but we must not frustrate the grace of God Paul said in Galatians 2 20 I do not frustrate the grace of God the grace of God upon this house will not be frustrated the grace of God upon this ministry will not be frustrated your destiny will not be frustrated the predetermined and the pre counsel and the pre the destined counsel of God will be fulfilled in your life. No one will abort it. Can I hear Rasin? Amen. Amen. On this note, we are going to pray. And we are going to take our scripture from Isaiah chapter 33, verse number 10. Message emphasis. When I see prayer, I can never be tired. I'm a very lazy man, but when it comes to prayer, where I come from, uh, April 23rd and 24th, we entered church 8 a.m. We left church 8 p.m. Sunday night. January, the last Sunday and Saturday in January, we entered church. At a time, we have to lock ourselves in. And then 8 p.m. in the night. The last Sunday in July, Saturday and in July, we will lock ourselves again. We'll do another one till Sunday night. Everybody goes home. You know where I come from is the best country in the world. Where everything is cheap and dollar rate to, to the exchange rate is one to one. Can I live in amen? Yeah. Calling those things that be not, God will change your story to glory. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 10. Now, now I am stepping in. Who is stepping in? God says, 
from now on, I'm doing what? I am doing what? Do you believe God with it for his word? Do you know that the more assured word is the word of God? Do you know that heaven and earth may pass away? Matthew 5, 18. Not a title of God's word shall return unfulfilled. Now watch the B part. He said, the gloves comes off. Whatever has been a cage, a shackle, a chain, a limitation, the line and the visible realm that have been drawn that you will never pass. A young man used to be with us. It's everybody, once they get to 45 in his family, they die. So I said to him, I said, they might have been dying before you. But you will not only cross 45. You will live long beyond your father. When the sinner one died and we went for the burial, the father was the one entertaining everyone at the age of 78. In Edo State. In Nigeria. Entertaining and serving everybody. He said, you see, Pastor, you see my father. You see my dad. I said, don't bother yourself about it. I said, you will at least your father. Cross 45. Now he's 50 something. Listen, there is no line drawn in the realm of the spirit that God has not drawn for you that will come to pass. You will live long. You will fulfill purpose. Everyone appointed to die here. Nobody will buy coffee for you this year. Nobody will buy coffee for your children. Nobody will buy coffee for your spouse. Your life will be rebranded with long life with the Lord satisfy you. Because you have known his name. According to Psalm 9, from 91, the Lord God will show his salvation. The strength of God's salvation will be perfected in your life. You will be victorious. In the name of Jesus. He said the cloves comes off. He says now see how mighty God is. How mighty? Who will God show in his life that is mighty? So we are going to pray this prayer. And I want you to pray. You know prayer is business. A good businessman does not toil with any chance opportunity in business. Because his conscience, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, that a great and effectual door have been opened before him. But there are many adversaries. Whatever came with you from your house that is not of God, they have made a mistake. They are not going back with you. Only the goodness and the mercy of God will go back with you. Your victory will be enforced. Your life will be rebranded. Your story is changing for glory. If you are the fellow, let your amen roar like thunder. You are going to say, my father, my father. Stepping into my war, stepping into my affairs and take over. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, make a demand on God. He said, whatever we ask the father in the name of Jesus, he will do it. Whatever we ask in Jesus' name, he says he will do it. This is Jesus' house. Magnify his name in this house. Give him glory. Every house that is of Jesus, there are miracles. Every house that, that is of Jesus, there are wonders, there are healings, there are salvations, there are fruitfulness, there are progress, there are prosperity. Ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Knock to dwell in his presence. Open your mouth and pray. Put more life into your prayer. Put more life into your prayer. My father, my father. I place a demand. Step in and take over. Step into the affairs of my life. Step into that stubborn case in my life. Step into the case of my health. Step into the case of my marriage. Step into that case in court. Step into my affairs. Step into my works. My father, my father. Step in and take over. Whatever I commit to your hand, you are able to keep until the day of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. My father, my father. Step in and take over. Step in and take over. Take over my project. Take over my health. Take over that child. Take over my life. Take over my mother. Take over my father. Take over my children. Take over my project. Take over my dreams. Take over my ambition. Take over my vision. Take over my wants. Take over my wife. Take over my works. My father, my father. Step in and take over. Step in and take over. Step in and part the Jordan. Step in and make the highway in the Red Sea of my life. Oh Lord, step in now. Step in now. Step in now. Step in now. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. 
take over enforce your victory ladies and gentlemen enforce your victory pray men ought to to pray and not to faint don't call it quit open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray shalabasa akakusu kakakaraka kakakaka gugoro kakadeha itebosa itebosa Zeke pa 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 Zepo Zepo Zakoka bossa cha Reke bossa cha ya tata bossa Rapossa patata And so shall it be in Jesus name Be seated There is some one under the utterance of my voice You are physically present here And there are three people online Listen there is this incessant, terrible dreams of nightmare. Seeing your past friends, relatives that are dead in your dream. And your spirits have been down and you are scared. And some things you are doing is like there is no tomorrow to be seen because of dead. I stand by the revelation of the spirit of the living God. By the prophetic mandate upon my life as a prophet of nations. With this apostolic unction to decree over your life. Every appointment with death is hereby cancelled. I say every appointment with death is hereby cancelled. If you are the fellow, place your hand on your head and your belly button. Uh, if you are the fellow in that, with that dream, those nightmares of death that have been knocking and it's like there's no tomorrow, it's like you wake up, you are, you are afraid that am I really alive? I decree by the opening of my eyes to see this, I command the power of grave. I say, oh grave, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your power? I command by the revelation of the spirit because I shall decree it in and it shall be established unto me. Whether offline, whether online, by the revelation of the spirit, every appointment with death, the victory of life is over you. I command by the blood covenant of Jesus. Exchange is no robbery. Jesus died for you to live. I I command that same spirit that raised Jesus from death quicken your mortal body to the glory and honor of his name. I command you resurrect! 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 In the name of Jesus! Death disappear! Death disappear! In the name of Jesus! Receive abundance of life! Long life from today! In the name of Jesus! Thank you Jesus! Who told, that, who told that that child will not be a success? There is a family here, you have a child. Very curious. It's like the black sheep of the family. God will have me say to you, reframe your mind, your language, and reframe your words concerning this child. Because the stone that is rejected today shall be the chief cornerstone for that family. Show love. Show love and see my hand at work. Your hatred keeps my hand from, from the transformation you desire. You pray with all your heart for the boy, but the heart is contrary to what you are praying for. Change your language. And see, for the same stone that the devil is rejecting and you are cooperating with, we become the chief cornerstone of the family. For tomorrow lies ahead with great treasures and great returns. And that's why the devil is attacking the young guy. But flow in love with God and see what God will do with him. Now, Jesus being the true example of a victorious living, a victorious Christian life, then emulating Jesus and Jesus reflecting in you and I truly reflect and define us as living a victorious Christian life. You know, today in church, we are spiritual in church, holy in church, outside church. We try to do in Rome as Roman does, and we try to do in church as church people do. You know, the Bible tells us about the place of double-mindedness. You know, dual personality, God does not take delight in it. You are neither cold nor hot, God takes no pleasure in it. He says, we're cast out. Now, what am I saying? If Jesus wins souls, what stop you from winning souls? You've been in church for six months. You are not even a worker. And you are saying, God bless me, bless me. It's good for God to bless you. But there are certain things that will elude you, not a cause. 
Take, for example, all of us like quoting, no weapon form against which I prosper. Are we familiar with it here? Even some of us have the stickers those days. We put like seats in front of our door, thinking the stickers is the angel that keeps charge. But you know that scripture is not for everybody. In Isaiah chapter 15, verse 17, it says, No weapon form against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you yourself stand to do what? Condemn. For this is the heritage that is the property, the inheritance, the assets, the belongings, the possession of those who serve God. So if you are not a worker, oh, I don't have time, the nature of my job, what do you have that you have not received? John 3, 27. 1 Corinthians 4, 7. What do you have that you have not received of God? You know, at times, we do things and we say things to make that God made mistake. Why are you not a worker? Is this pregnancy? The blessing of the Lord make a teacher that no sorrow. Did God make, make mistake by making you pregnant? Oh, why are you not a worker? The nature of, the, of my husband. My husband does not like me to mix with anybody in church. Is marriage a cause? Why must God be the one guilty for blessing us? Ah, you know my nature of work. I do Sunday because Sunday pays than three than the work I do during the week. And you say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Now, you see, what you love is the God of Mammon, not the Lord himself. You are a good singer, but not a good worshiper. Because a good worshiper will also worship in spirit and in truth. So in the light of this, there are demons that keep you from serving, which is the demon of pride. The demon of lack of humility, because without a humble heart, you cannot be a victorious Christian. Jesus had to place his diet in heaven and humble himself and came through the process in the manger and everything did. It, I, I will somebody slap down. I caught his ear. Peter caught the ear of my enemy. I took it and then placed it back. Ah, I need more grace. If I would tell Peter, I caught the second one. Caught his neck to show that I'm anointed. Who born you? But that is not God. Your enemy will not die. I said your enemy will not die. Yeah. But your enemy will sit with you on the table to see God's lifting. Yeah. You know the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse 11 that we should be fathered in spirit serving the Lord. And he told us that we should bless them that cause us. And also pray for them that despitefully use us. I've seen tremendous miracles where people pray for their enemies to prosper. And God prosper them. Where did you get that one from? Job 42. Until Job prayed for his friends, his captivity was not lifted. Despite God was at work in all of this. So when we come and say our enemies will die, why not your enemies die? Who will you now give the testimony to? <laughs> I pray for you today. That most troublesome enemies of yours will become your subject. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know when we are angry, we see a manner of things. A woman was praying one time and he said, Father, now, this is the story. Let me give you this as an appetizer so that it don't be a matter of chick, 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 chick. Now, this woman happened to be a stepmother. Two wives, one husband. And then one of the other daughters, he thought that was, was the one who took something that belongs to her. No, no, it was her own child that took her belonging. So came on, started cursing. They say, mommy, be patient, let us find this. They say, no, I know the fellow who took this thing. But this fellow, this thing will happen. This fellow, this thing will happen. This and was wrecking and wrecking. At the end of the day, the daughter is, our own daughter showed up, behold, and said, what is it? He said, this and this. He said, mommy, I took it. You know, at times when we pray that whoever does something, you never know that you yourself could be yourself yourself. So when they say, no weapon form against you shall prosper, the one you now fashion against yourself, what is the solution? So, what is the remedy? As a result, the soul that has snapped with his feet shall do what? Shall I say? We are going to lift up your right hand and say, My father, my father. Every angry word that I've spoken, every negative word I've spoken, every reaction born out of gossip, my father, my father, in your mercy, forgive me. And help me in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, pray that prayer in 60 seconds. Pray it. He that has no sin, if we say we have no sin, we call him liar. And the truth is not in us. Every negative word, every angry word, every gossiping, righteous and unrighteous gossiping, 
holy and unholy talks behind the tables inside our cars inside our bedroom inside our city room that have kept us from being victorious that have hindered our breakthrough my father my father deliver us deliver us deliver us i have mercy have mercy let mercy prevail instead of judgment let mercy prevail let love with the suffering law which is love let it overtake my wrong sayings my wrong reactions my negativity my the causes are pronounced against myself against my loved ones and unnecessarily going against god causing god what god has blessed lord in your mercy i repent and i receive answers and so shall it be in jesus name the lord forgive our trespasses our iniquities shall no more be regarded because if god will mark iniquity who shall stand may mercy prevail in your stead may the love of god overshadow you as the mountain is round about jerusalem let the presence of god be round about you your story will change to glory if you are the fellow let your amen roar like thunder so serving god is a prerequisite for your victory for enforcing your victory exodus chapter 23 verse 25 to 27 and i quote it says if you serve the lord thy god it says it will bless it says that it will bless your bread and your waters. It will take away sickness and disease. Nor will cast his young. Neither will any be barren in the land. With long life, will you do what? And with your eyes, will you see the ease of the enemy? Some of us cannot go to our village because they say somebody is pursuing us. But the scripture says if you serve God, it's your enemy that will be fleeing at your appearance. Your fear and your dress shall go before them. But when we are not even serving in love, we are not serving in, for love. We are not serving with love. Any little thing will get offended. Why must pastor talk to me this way? Everything they say, where did they bring this man from? He's just talking to us anyhow. Does he think, that we, does he think we have time? Does he think we have... Listen, no matter the offense, no matter the offense, our forgiveness is, 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 is prevalent over whatever judgment. I don't like the way my HOD is talking to me. Listen, when they don't talk to you and you are not offended, then you are a mature Christian. Ah, ah, don't you know my age? At 69, at 69, one small girl will not be talking to me because I'm doing usher. Ah, Gandhi should carry his work home. <laughs> Carry your work here. Ah, eh? America, because I just came. Hey, <laughs> and I said, they say we should serve, and I'm not sir. You're not talking to me anyhow. Listen, Luke chapter 17, verses 1 to 4. Jesus said to his disciples, If you are my true disciple indeed, not follow, follow disciple. You know, some of us are following because everybody, if you want to see pastor, is through us. Access to PA is through us. So the best thing is to kill around about us. He said, if you are my true, he qualified true and untrue disciple. Orangutan disciples and genuine disciples. Now, he says, my true disciples indeed, offense, or it's impossible for offense not to come. But he said, it would be better for him. He says, it would be better for such a fellow to even, than a, 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 a millstone being tied upon his neck and thrown into the sea. Now, if God has already fought for you by somebody offending you, and you now say your hand is bigger than the slap of God, and you now tell God to excuse you, both the sinner and the, and the righteous, both the wicked and the good, it is God, the God of all. Even the atheist that said there is no God, God is still God. Yeah. Am I right? But it is when you honor him by do, be a doer of his word that God fights for you. God is a God of long suffering. God is a God of the fruit of character. There are people who offended you 30 years ago. That judgment is just coming today. But I pray for you because you have repented. It is written in Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 2 to 4. It says, this proverb shall no more be said in Israel. And I said, this proverb shall not be said in your family. That their fathers has eaten sour grape. The teeth of the children are set at edge. Whatever your father, 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 mother, 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 has committed that is ranging against you by the blood covenant, I command it uprooted. Receive the victory in total. In your life, there shall be no generational causes, generational blessings, generational liftings, generational victory, complete turnaround for you, complete turnaround for your family, complete turnaround for your household, complete turnaround in your career, complete turnaround for your favor. 
for the sake of Jacob, God prosper no man. For your sake, God will prosper your family. In the name of Jesus, I declare you blessed. I declare you fulfilled. I declare you transformed. I declare you lifted. Quantum leap, giant stride, fulfilled destiny. In the name of Jesus. As I close, so that the door will not be closed. And the gate will not be shut for life. There are personal desires in your life. But no matter the place that we are standing, except a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. What shall it profit a man if he goes to church every day? If he possesses the whole world and his soul is not for Jesus? If you deny me in public, he said, I will deny you before my heavenly father. And listen, it is not just everybody that starts that is victorious for life. It is he that endures to the end. The grace of an overcomer is upon you. I want to, before this call is being made, I want you to make a commitment with God and say, Lord, help me. I want to serve you. But these are my challenges and my limitations. Grant me grace. Bow your head and bow your heart and pray that prayer quickly seated and tell God, the secret things that are keeping you back. We say devil, devil, devil. But as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. You are a product of your decision. But Lord God, I want to serve you. Irrespective of my age, irrespective of my job, irrespective of my career, I want to serve with all my heart. I want to follow through with the covenant of service. I want to, in humility, I want to be lifted. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, the time will not permit us to call us out. But follow any of the pastor after the service and reach out. I want to know the rudiment of being a worker in this church. I want to go to the process of being a worker. I'm tired of sitting in church coming and going without serving God. Proverbs 16, 7 says, when the will of a man pleases the Lord, it makes even if enemy to be at peace with him. We have more enemies than friends. And as a result, this must change. Finally, one prayer point before I go. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6, TPT. It is right and just for God to trouble those who trouble you. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Are we ready? We are going to pray that God trouble my troublers. Do what? And establish my victory for life. In the name of Jesus. We are lift up your voices and pray that prayer. Thank you Father. Thank you Jesus. I don't know those who are troubling you. I don't know the races that is evil racial in your life. I don't know the forces that are being used against you. But Lord, trouble them. God knows how to trouble your troublers. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. The Passion Translation of the Bible. TPT. Lord, trouble them that trouble me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Because it is right and just for God to trouble your troublers. Your peace will be entrenched. God will fight your battles. God will contend with them that contend with you. In the name of Jesus. Bow your head and bow your heart. You are here. You have obtained victory. You've got the victory. And you have come to enforce the victory. The sustainability of the victory is to be hidden in Christ. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to say, Jesus, I say yes to your call. I want to give my life to Christ. And you are saying yes. Lift your hand. I want to pray for you. God bless you. I want to release the grace to follow through with Jesus. If you are raising it, raise it above your head. Cancel us, please help. Raise it properly. These hands that are lifted, I decree that you'll be favored. Lift it properly. Lift it properly. The Lord bless you. Lift it. Keep lifting it. There are people towards the middle side behind the camera. Lord, please do properly. Lord, honor this hand. Lift this hand higher. They are lifted unto you for favor. They are lifted unto you for wisdom. They are lifted unto you for victory. You know the pains in their heart. Lord, heal the pain, turn the pain to profit. You know the sorrow deep down. Lord, turn it to joy. Let your joy be their strength, the place of their hiding, their refuge. Let your hand be mighty over them. Once you receive it, just stand to your feet to honor Jesus. They will tell you thereafter what to do. Pastor, what should we do thereafter? Please stand to your feet. God bless you. They will help you through. They will help you through. Just stand to your feet. Celebrate them, church. Lift your head and celebrate them. Encourage them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be a double-minded fellow. Double-mindedness, fear, agitating passions are enemies of victorious life. 
the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. Let us receive Pastor Gandhi Olaoye. Thank you and God bless you.